So I've never done a video like this before, but I thought now would be the time to do it because of what a unique time it is. This is the end of a decade, which in itself isn't that interesting because it's just numbers, but it means a little bit more to me because of where I am in my life now. I'm 31 years old. So a decade ago, I was 21. And in the ages between 21 and 31, I mean, a lot of, it's, it's where a lot of people kind of find out who they are, and it's definitely been that for me. But I don't want to spend this video talking about things that happened to me in the last 10 years. I actually edited a small montage at the end of this video that I think you guys will enjoy. It shows all kind of clips of uh, things that I've worked on over the past 10 years, in no particular order. I just tried to make it a little bit uh, as compelling as it could be using the footage that I have. But instead, I wanted to focus on the future and what I want to do and why. To be perfectly honest, I don't know why I'm doing what I'm doing now. This channel has started in a really unusual way. If you go back and look at a bunch of my old stuff from the beginning, you'll see that it's just random uh, videos, not even all puppet stuff. But slowly I've changed this channel into a resource and place where people can come to learn about puppetry. We started the podcast two years ago. And there you can learn a lot about the business, about performing and building puppets. And of course, I release tutorials as often as I can. And I would say that really is kind of my goal in the future, is to just promote puppetry in general. I think the world is changing in a lot of ways, and I have some theories of to where puppetry fits into that world. If you look at the history of puppetry, I kind of see two categories of the types of people that get into puppetry. There are performers, and then there's makers, people who make puppets. But with the way technology is, I see performers less likely to get into puppetry in the future. The cliche thing to point at is CGI in movies for this, which is a true example, but of course that seems like it's a really uh, high thing to aim for. But even for people sitting in their homes, or even kids who, who have a natural ability to perform, uh, what they can just do is just use an app on their phone, use a face filter to become a dog, a cat, a pig, any type of character that they want, and to be able to ship it to the world immediately from that same device. And I think young performers moving up forward are gonna gravitate toward that. Whereas if they had a puppet, they'd have to practice with that puppet. They'd have to learn a new skill. So, so there's a barrier of entry with puppetry that you don't have with this kind of technology. In the future, I think that it's gonna be more people who make puppets that are going to be doing puppet performing. So if you're interested in making puppets, you have an investment in yourself to also perform it in some way. If you spend all this time making it, you're going to use that tool. So that's why I see the future of puppet performers also being people who have built puppets. So I wanna use this channel as a way to get more people into making puppets so that we can have more puppetry in the world in the future. That's my goal. If you look at my Facebook page and my Instagram page all the time, I try to share what other people are doing as well. Anytime I'm tagged in something, I always retweet it, share it on an Instagram story, or share it to my Facebook page. In my opinion, the more people doing puppetry, the better. So in the future, you can expect a lot more building on this channel, a lot more tutorials, interviews with puppeteers, behind the scenes videos, and I'm sure a lot of things that I haven't even thought of yet. And it's not just limited to making puppets either. There are so many different trades and tools that are used in puppetry. So in a lot of ways, I really think of this as a maker channel. So we'll be doing more videos on building sets, building props, videos on performing, and even what it's like to shoot a short film. So if you have any interest in that, or if you know anyone who has any interest in that, please feel free to subscribe or share it with someone that you think would be interested. As always, if you have any ideas of something that you'd like to see on this channel, please leave a comment down below, and I look forward to whatever the future holds. So here's a montage of things that have been going on for the last 10 years. I'd love to know what your favorite clip was, or if there was a big thing that you think that I missed. Enjoy. Hello? How does this thing work? Hello, my name is Adam Krutinger, and I'm a puppeteer and puppet builder from Buffalo, New York. Don't wait. The sun just breaking the weather. I think it's coming soon. Mr. Crutinger. What a name! What a name! He's leaving the room. Please don't place blame. It's always the same. Too close to the flame just to say whatever. Whatever. This is the biggest one, the snowman. He's a little over seven feet tall. To be alone with me, it's hard to be alone with me. Eyebrow and an eyelid.
<laughs> it is a lot of devices. It's very ambitious of you, yeah. I'm floating my way down to earth again. Puppeteers including uh, Adam Krutinger, uh, Michelle Costa, Franklin Boy, um, and some students from Damon College as well. On display now through Wednesday, some awesome puppets created by artist Adam Krutinger. This collection includes all sorts of fascinating folks made of foam and fleece. In To be alone with me. Alone with These are the phases of Adam, and I think like each time he has a phase of something that he's really good at, it just gets better and better. So I'm just like surprised. So, like I'm wondering like what is he gonna do next?